Okay, for assignment eight, we are taking a past assignment, either our spot illustration that we just did for assignment seven, or our vector logo that we did for assignment six, and we're going to be adding type design to it. So type design is what you're looking at here with these letters, right? This is a certain typeface, which means each letter form each number, each symbol, notice how they get sharper and sharper. They don't lose resolution as I zoom in. That's because every letter form and typeface design is an individual vector. And that's why you can choose your different point sizes when you're in a Word document. And you can print an asterisk the size of a piece of paper, and it will look perfectly clean because they are vectors and they're scalable. But we are so used to just using kind of our typeface options and just choosing the best of the available options that we often don't think about how these typefaces are designed in the first place. And it is a skill of digital art, not just to design customized type or to modify existing type to your purposes, to create a logo type or to create what's called a title flag for for a, a poster or for an album cover or for a book cover, but also to arrange the type with our artwork, right? So layout. And there are a bunch of skill sets here. So if we look at the assignment, we have some demonstrations of text blocking, trying to understand where the type will fit in with our imagery. And then there's the actual type design. And this is an example from Stranger Things, which modifies an existing typeface. So I'll be showing you how to do that. But before you can even do a text blocking sketch, you need to know two things. You first need to know what image are you going to be using to put your type with. And then what do you actually want your type to say? And it's good to keep it minimal and pretty simple. So you don't want a whole paragraph of text to have to be, to have to fit around your image somehow. And because we know we're doing a poster design, it's helpful to know what the, the end format of your poster is going to be. So since my theme was based on a, a playing card, I'm using that dimension as my physical format. So I want this type, to work with my image, my spot illustration image. I want it to be reversible, just like a playing card. So it works from either side. And I want it to um, be readable, right? But not distract from my image, but instead to enhance it. So my idea for this playing card is that this top half is for the first dose of a vaccine, and this bottom half is for the second dose, right? So I'm gonna put first and second there, much like you would have, you know, a spade or a diamond in the corner of a playing card. And then I have this text here, anxiety by, plagued by. And I think I might lose the by, so it's just anxiety and plagued. And I might lose them entirely but that was the original idea. So that when you read it from the first dose, it was plagued by, and then you kind of scroll around, anxiety. And then for the second dose, anxiety by, plagued by. I don't know that that works as well. So anxiety, and then maybe plagued, right? So that's a little dark, but we'll see. We'll see if I use that. So for these two, I have the sketch. How did I sketch these? Well, there's more than one way to sketch, right? I pencil sketched my spot illustration. But for my type design, and you can definitely pencil sketch your type design. This is obviously pencil sketched type design. It's kind of made to look hand done and kind of tattooish, right? But for my sketching of my... Um, of my second and first, what I did was I composited. 
I kind of sketched digitally. And I used a Google image search. And because it's type, what I did is I put in quotes the type I wanted as a search, an image search. And so if you do that, like first, it will show you images that are tagged with that exact phrase. So you'll see lots of different type designs for first. And there's this one for New Jersey Community Bank. And I really liked kind of the wavy nature of it. I liked how vertical and pointed it was. It kind of reminded me of a syringe with maybe a fluid that's coming out of it. Um, remember my first design of my spot illustration had a syringe in it. And then I decided to take that out because it was too busy. So maybe with the type design, I can suggest it. So this is basically their logo. And the logo type puts that first with the letter forms Constitution Bank, right? And they have other versions of it. But I thought that was an interesting one. And then I looked up second. And I found this one, which was from a second grade newsletter for week 19, right? And what, what I liked about this one is it's kind of classic old letterpress letters, right? And then what I did is I just used, used them in Photopea and I arranged them around my sketch. And the first worked pretty well but I wanted to put the diamond behind it because on its own it was a little too vertical. And then the second didn't work spread out like this. So inspired by some other seconds I found, mainly this one, I liked how this kind of arranged stuff underneath, though this was too mechanical looking. So it makes you realize how, how important the type design is, whether it's blocky, whether it's curvy, whether it has little serifs, which are what these uh, little uh, handles are called, these little embellishments. And it wasn't until the 20th century we started to get type that didn't have serifs. And this is called modern typefaces. You know, no embellishments. But you still, you have to pay attention to the angles, how vertical or how horizontal they are. And then I was thinking of putting the word dose in there. You know, for maybe I could fit second dose underneath. And what I found was, you know, different type designs for dose. Some that are like overly complicated and kind of hard to read. Some that are very classic. I think I chose the really classic one. And then I just designed it with a vector shape behind it and and put it at an angle and it and put an underline under it and i thought that would be good on my card that's kind of a droplet under each under both of them and then just say dose and then dose but then i realized you don't need it it's kind of clear from the context right so i just i'm going to do the little droplet so that's part of my type design too so that's how I sketched, and you're, you're welcome to sketch with compositing too. Just like our logo design, this just gets us started. This is an idea for the vectors I want to create, because I can't use what's, what I find online, especially when it's just low resolution. You know, this is not going to look very good as a, a full resolution printed poster. So. I'm going to be making custom type that matches these. Now for plagued by anxiety, I don't really want to have to custom trace every letter form. So in that approach, I'm going to customize an existing, an existing typeface. And to do that, as you can see on the assignment, sorry, I'm going between so many windows here. That is what Stranger Things did. It took a, an existing typeface, which is all already vector designs, and then it, it played with what's called 
the kerning in between each letter to make it feel more anxious. And then it also merged some of the forms into connected letter forms. And here is just a rough, um, without having to buy this font to do this exact thing, which is how they designed the real one, which you can find here. This is a type design in and of itself, how to design logo types, you know, customized graphics with just existing typefaces. And this goes through it from the designer of that. Right. But sometimes you just want to imitate it. So this is with a free typeface, but then you can see a lot of those same strategies can be used. And then we're going to add color to it and effects. And then we'll put it with our illustration and get a finished poster with type. Just like this. But to do pre-existing, to modify pre-existing type, there's a really great uh, site resource where designers share typefaces. It's like a, a Pixabay for type, and it's called Defont. And we know about image rights. We know about intellectual property. And Defont will make it really clear what the rights are for each typeface. So these are the most recently added ones. Kiss Boom, Leaves and Ground. There are thousands and thousands of fonts. So 58,000 right now. If you design a, a typeface and you want to offer it up, you can, you can put it up. So this one is free for personal use. You can always look up what that means. And personal use means that you shouldn't benefit, you shouldn't, uh, it's like a non-commercial Creative Commons, but you can definitely use it for your own purposes, just not for things to sell. So you see free for personal use is pretty common. This one is 100% free, which means it's, it's put into the public domain or Creative Commons open so that this can be used for any purpose. But how do you search so many different typefaces? Well, from your blocking sketch, you might know what kind of type you're looking for. And I want something that's kind of tattoo-ish, right? So I'm gonna search. And when I search tattoo, I get four pages, 83 different fonts, that have been tagged with that, some of which are more readable than others. But this is what I love about Defont. I already know what my type is going to be. It's plagued and anxiety. And once I type it in, I can submit it and it will show me what those letter forms will look like within these given typefaces. Notice I'm not using the word font. And I'm trying to be a bit of a graphic design nerd here if you want to have that specialized knowledge. Even though the site is called Defont, these are not fonts. Fonts are the variants. Fonts are when you bold something or italicize something or underline something. Those are fonts. Typefaces are the independent designs of each P for plagued. So what we're trying to first find is a typeface that we can modify, and then we might play with the different font choices within that typeface. Ooh, I like this one. It's very readable, but it's also very vertical. This one looks really nice. And, and I can work to make it a little bit more readable, but that's maybe the closest to my Eh, to my sketch, but it's a script typeface, which means that they're meant to always be touching. And that kind of limits what I can do with it. I think this one's quite nice. But this one is not even for personal use. This is just a demo. So it might not be a full, a full uh, typeface.
And then you have 